Let's talk about the album Rumors. A lot of people considered it at the time, and for that matter since, as the perfect or near perfect album for the times. Mm -hmm. It's one of the most famous rock albums in history. Lots of top 10 hits. What was it really about, Rumors? I'm keeping in mind that one, one critic called it a flawless record pulled from the wreckage of real lives. Yeah, exactly. Well, I've always been a firm believer that much of the appeal of Rumors uh, went beyond the music itself. That's not to take anything away from the musical accomplishment, but you have to understand that we were five people. Stevie and I had been a couple for a long time. John and Christine McVie had been married. So you had these two couples. By the time we got up to Sausalito to start recording Rumors, Stevie and I, although not quite as well-defined, were estranged, were not living together. We'd, for all intents and purposes, broken up. John and Christine McVie were divorced. So normally when people break up, when there's uh, pain, involved like that, uh, disappointment, um, heartache. People are allowed a, a requisite amount of distance and time in order to let the dust settle before they move on. Well, we did not have that luxury. We were, you know, in very close quarters, never had the, the luxury to be apart, so therefore never really had the luxury of closure. And also you had three writers. So Stevie was writing songs, basically dialogues to me. I was basically writing dialogues to her. And Christine McVie was writing dialogues to John. So you could say that, that what we did beyond the music was, was really tap into the voyeur in the audience. Uh, people really were able to invest in us as people because they could see, and it was very well documented, thank God it wasn't today where everything is so much more, you know, uh, th there's no decorum at all anymore. But, you know, I mean, th that, uh, there was nothing to hide. Everyone knew that, that this was what was being written about. Everyone knew that, that these songs, the subject matter was what we were living. And I think that there was an investment in, in not just the music, but in the people who made the music because of that. Correct me if I'm wrong, that you think it became a kind of soft rock novel, maybe a deep soft rock novel. Mm -hmm. A soap opera, perhaps. Well, I was trying to Raise it a little bit. From the <laughs> well, <laughs> you can go your own way. Go your own way. You wrote, among other things, "Go Your Own Way" and secondhand news. Mm -hmm. What were you saying to Stevie? Well, I think both of those are basically saying, "Hey, you know, um, I'm, I'm resigned to whatever happens, but, you know, it's a damn shame. Uh, it, and it's, it's not what I want. Uh, and that, I think that's, that's really about it, you know. Uh, I, actually, secondhand news, at least it has a little bit of tongue-in-cheek humor in it where, because it's basically saying, <laughs> as a contingency, if you ever get lonely, you know, uh, um, I, I, I'm, I'm always willing to proposition you. <laughs> Going back to that time, keeping in mind the epic arguments, to put it politely, and the drug use, mm -hmm. are you amazed that rumors ever got finished? Well, you know, um, it's, the drug use, w um, was part and parcel with the subculture. It wasn't there, you know, you can't talk about us in any different light than you can talk about anyone who was in there doing what 
and I talk about this on stage, you know, this was what we all thought we needed to do back then in order to be rock and roll and to be creative, which turned out to be not true. But in your case, it didn't wreck you. No, I never went to rehab. I never did anything. In fact, when I, when I took leave of the band after Tango in the Night, it was really just to say, okay, this is, this is the most crazy album I've ever made. The road is like times 10 from whatever goes on. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm taking a break. Deal me out. Yeah, I can't speak for other people, but you know, uh, I had, um, I was very grounded in a process. Again, to just to sort of take it back to the whole making of rumors for a second, the reason we did get through that was because we all knew that we needed to somehow fulfill the destiny that had been laid out for us. And to fail to do that would have been the weak way to go. So there's, there's this kind of um, underpinning of heroicism that may uh, strike people without maybe thinking of that word, you know, that we did accomplish what we accomplished under pretty adverse circumstances. And, and for, just for myself, you know, it was about choices. It was about saying, well, I'm hurting from Stevie. Here she is. She needs me to do this. I guess I could do a crappy job or I could do the job I know I can do. What's the choice? And, and so you try to make the right choices and that ac accumulates and adds up to something. And I guess the same could be said of, of drug use or or anything that gets some people into trouble because they, they can't really uh, think about it in terms of choices.